So this is going to be one of those days that I'm really going to have to work to get a video out. My equipment is outdated and I need to replace it. I'm in the process of doing that now. Uh, but it's going to take me a while. Forgive me, but this is about the 14th take. I'm exaggerating a little bit, not a lot. Um, anyway, this is the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt, and today is Tuesday, the 14th of September of 2021. Uh, welcome to everyone who's here on Rumble, on the podcast, and on YouTube. The subject today will be vaccine passports and PHI, or personal health information. And I'm going to go ahead and read through my notes to kind of get the ball rolling on what we're actually talking about today. There are probably many people out there unfamiliar with the idea of personal health information, or PHI. That concept is an important part of HIPAA and other healthcare-related laws, rules, and regulations. The basic idea is people cannot ask you or, uh, or others who may have it for personal information related uh, to health without cause, so personal health-related information without, without cause. In fact, even if they have cause... Uh, in many cases, you can still deny them access to that data. Some, like billers for health procedures, have more rights than many. Who doesn't typically have such rights? Well, your employer, for one. And if you think the local bar or restaurant is supposed to be able to see such things, you're out of your tree. You're, you're, you're a little bit cuckoo. You can imagine what this does to something like a vaccine passport. You see, what vaccinations you've received are not supposed to be relevant to any but a scant few people. Let's not forget, you can often refuse even those folks access to that information. This, of course, doesn't cover mandates. Not to say there's no potential answer, answer to that as well. Knowing who has and who hasn't been vaccinated for anything, it decidedly does cover. This should be an ensuing battle royal. How it will play out? That remains to be seen. Here's the thing I want you to understand. When you go into a shopping center, a person in that shopping center doesn't somehow magically have the right to ask you about whether or not you've had a polio vaccination. That's not something they have the right to do. And there are reasons that it works like that, that they're not allowed to do that. They don't, they're don't. they not hard to understand, but if you look at HIPAA as a, as a perfect example of what we're talking about, you'll come to a conclusion as to why it is that they, or at least as far as HIPAA, that they don't have the right to do that. That information is considered PHI, or personal, personal health information, and people are not allowed access to that information. Do you realize that in hospitals, they don't have the right a lot of times to information like your address unless they're doing some kind of definite procedure that gives them the, the right to do that. But as far as it goes, other people definitely don't have that right. If you start talking about, like I say, your local supermarket or the theater or, um, you know, that, that pub down the street, uh, they don't have the right to that in the United States. HIPAA and other things forbid them from asking for that information without very specific rights to do so. And that means that if they say to you, uh, hey, I, I need to know whether or not you, you're you vaccinated uh, for something or whether or not you've had a particular procedure occur on you. My answer to that person is, when did you become a health professional? Oh, you're not. Well, then guess what? You can whistle for it. Now, they have the right to refuse you access, I would imagine, if you choose not to go into those particular facilities. But nobody, but nobody can ask you and expect to get health-related information out of you without very specific um, parameters being met for that to be the case. And again, you literally have the right oftentimes to deny those people access to that information. So if someone thinks that when I go into the local bar or to the local grocery store or wherever it happens to be that they have any right to request vaccine status from me of any kind of vaccine that I've ever had or any other medical procedure that I've ever had, you now know that those people typically have zero right to that information, none at all. So if they ask you for that information, they're asking you for something that they do not have the right to ask you for. They just don't. 
If you walk into a bar, if you walk into a theater, if you walk into a church and they ask you about your vaccination status and they tell you that they, there's some rule that says that you have to be vaccinated to be in their church, you tell them that then there's a problem because they don't have a right based on HIPAA and other regulations and, in, you know, uh, uh, structure laws and so forth. They don't have a light, right to ask you for that. And I'm here to tell you that's probably even bigger than I know. And I work in as a software developer in the healthcare sector. So I have to know about HIPAA and things of that sort. But I would bet you that there are other things that make it so that they have basically no right to that information. This is totally aside from any other rights that might exist. This is totally aside from people asking you for information and you having a right to your privacy, basically. Totally aside from that. And it doesn't matter what laws are in place. Now, yet again, can these people tell you that you can't go into their restaurant or their other business if they choose to do so? Well, yeah, they can actually do that. That's correct. But the reality is uh, you also have the right to uh, tell them straight up with no question and no compunction, this is not your business. It's not your business. You're not a health care provider, but even if you are, you have only so much right to see or hear this information from me. I'm sorry, if you think that you have more, you're confused. And in fact, for most people, the answer is how much right do you have to that information? None at all. Not any. This is the way HIPAA and other such regulations, rules, and laws work. People can't just demand information from you and expect to get it because they think they have a right to it. You actually have to have that right to it to get that information. And if you don't, you don't get it. And that's all there is to that. So as far as I'm concerned, I see ensuing battles going on where various entities decide that you're being asked for information nobody or very few people have the right to know from you. Okay? Hospitals literally cannot ask you for that information unless they're treating you. So if I go to visit a patient, it's none of their business whether or not I've been vaccinated for something. They can ask me politely to stay out of their facility if they want. They can say that if I, if they, if I present a risk to their patients, they don't want me in their facility. But they do not have the right, literally by law, rule, or regulation, they do not have the right to ask you for information like health information, even if you walk into a hospital for something other than treatment. If you're going to visit your friend or your grandma, they don't have the right. No nursing home has that right either. I'm sorry, they don't. And it doesn't matter what they say. That's the law. That's how it works. They can like it. They can not like it. It doesn't change whether or not it's true. Now, again, I'm going to say this. You have the battle of whether or not somebody will hold you out of a given place because they consider you a risk <clears throat> if you refuse to answer the question. But the reality is you have the right to take that up with authorities that then have the right to actually pressure those individuals and tell them because of HIPAA, no, you cannot ask that information. You can't ask that. Sorry, it's not within the realm of what you're allowed to know of visitors. Is it in the realm of what you're allowed to know about people who stay in your nursing home or your hospital? Well, yeah, to some degree it is because they need to know that inf that information for treatment, your medical history and so forth. So in those instances, it's actually within their rights to ask for that information. And typically they'll actually make you sign something that says they've, they've uh, uh, requested you to let them have access to it. And that's fine and that's good and I have no problem with that idea. But when you talk about your local supermarket or the, the kennel where you bunk your dog when you go on holiday or the airlines, for goodness sakes, airlines. No, airlines do not have that right. Buses do not have that right. No, None of these people have that right. So when you start asking for that kind of information, <clears throat> you are in breach, literally, of federal law, rules, and regulations. So as far as it goes, it's time for people to start standing up and saying, it isn't about whether or not I've had the COVID vaccination. It's about whether or not you have the right to ask me whether or not I've had the COVID vaccination. And the answer to that question is largely going to be no. It's going to be no. All right. I need to go ahead and wrap up. This is the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt, and today is Tuesday, the 14th of September of 2021. That means tomorrow will be Wednesday for a lot of people. That payday, the 15th of September of 2021. Uh, thank you for everyone who's been here on Rumble, on the podcast, and on YouTube. Remember, Rumble is my preferred platform. You can give me a plus 
boxing glove or a positive rumble or a minus or a negative rumble on rumble if you choose to do so you can give me a thumbs up or a like a thumbs down or a dislike on youtube i'm sorry on rumble you can give me the plus minus boxing glove and on youtube in case i said it wrong you can give me the uh, thumbs up or like and the thumbs down or dislike uh, whichever you give me or if you give me none of those I would really love it if you commented on what I'm saying here because I think it's important for me to be producing stuff that you want to hear that's why I I'm here uh, I don't get paid anything really for these videos maybe at some point that'll happen but it's not something that happens at the present moment hope you're having a good day today it is as I say Tuesday so we're just getting into the work week really I uh, hope things are going well for you, and hopefully we will see you again on Wednesday's edition of the Daily Summation from Curse, Religion, and Politics. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded on Tuesday, the 14th of September of 2021. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's Religion and Politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurtz Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional and maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at kpshubert. That's at kpshubert. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurtz Re Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. I have a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurt's Religion and Politics as well. I have I am on Patreon if you want to support me. That's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurt's Religion and Politics on Patreon. I have a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with, a, with an S dot kpshubert dot com. That's podcasts dot kpshubert dot com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the Daily Summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.